I believe it's time for us to start a show for you today. This is Narc Abuse TV Network. Uh, we have the honor of having Michelle back with us uh, from the BBB brand, the Bumped, Bruised, and Blessed brand. So I believe everyone is here. We've got everything situated on our end. We are ready to go. And the lady, the diva of the day, Michelle, is with us as well. There she is. How are you doing, my friend? Awesome. <laughs> awesome, awesome. <laughs> you you continue to survive our time together uh, because I am just enthralled by your passion uh, to help others. But uh, let's get, you know what, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's get a little bit closer to each other. And let me put my camera on now that I've done my hair and I'm ready to go. Yeah. Uh, yes, I had to get ready for you. Uh, we are going to cover a number of different things. And because this show, our shows uh, that uh, my daughters and I put on, these live shows are technically audience generated. They tell us what they want to hear and see. And uh, you struck a, a chord with them. You hit a pulse because you talked about financial abuse. You talked about controlling people. You talked about emotional abuse. Uh, and they wanted to hear more of that. So that's what we're doing today. I had something else in, uh, in line, but, uh, we switched the show up. Plenty so that, of material. Uh, yeah. Okay. Pl yeah, plenty of material. I knew I could count on you for that because, uh, that's what they want. They want tips, tools, and strategies, uh, uh -huh. that they pick up on their lunch breaks or on their, uh, their 10, 15 minute breaks. So you're the right person for this today. Um, Michelle, do me a favor because we do these shows for people on their, on their breaks mainly. So they always want me to get right to it. So we're going to, I know you and I have no problem with that. So we're going to get right to it. Uh, you have uh, a video that you just put out concerning financial abuse. Yes. Give us your feelings and thoughts on that. You know what I was, it's not something that I had on the agenda yeah. either, but yeah. it's, it's such a covert, you know, um, sly on the sly, like underhanded thing that narcissists do. And it just goes under the radar because like most of the insidious manipulation tactics that these monsters use, mm -hmm. it goes, you know, it's just, they turn you against yourself where you believe, Oh, I need to be more financially responsible or you take it on yourself. And it's absolutely mm -hmm deliberately done on their part i i like what you just said i've never heard it said that way they turn you on yourself what yeah. do you mean what do you mean by that when you say that narcissist this is why i'm so passionate mm -hmm. i feel like it's just the most disgusting heinous abuse because it's so undetected because narcissists get into your head and they turn you against yourself. They constantly chip away at your self-worth, your self-perception, where at the end, of, they'll take a strong, intelligent, beautiful person mm -hmm. and they just destroy you to a shell of your former self. And most, of the, time, most of the time when this is happening, Michelle, uh, if a person hasn't researched it or they have no idea, they're constantly living a life of trying to keep that person happy, not recognizing that that person is really out to drain them and get them to turn against themselves. Oh, certainly. When it, I, when, it, I hear, I'm sorry, Paxson. No, 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 no. Go I ahead, do, my friend. That's why I do this, man, because when I was in my young 20s, I was engaged to a piece of garbage loser jerk of a narcissist mm -hmm. and he i was a strong independent successful woman mm -hmm. getting my graduate education and by the time i was done like he was done with me rather mm -hmm. um i was i i think back to how i was and it just makes me cringe because I was so far removed from the woman that I essentially am. And I am married to my incredible soulmate of a husband. So that's why I am bumped. I am bruised. But more than anything, I am blessed. 
And mm. that's why I pay this forward because I just want to equip people with whatever they need to arm themselves against this horrific abuse. Yeah. If, if, um, if you had to describe, if you had to describe, you, of course you didn't see this coming, but here we go. If you had to describe what I'm going to put a word up on the screen and tell me from your life experience in dealing with someone who was narcissistic, even though you didn't experience financial abuse, I what did. Does, I did. What, what, okay. So what does this word mean to you experiencing financial abuse and what you've gone through? You're bumped, so bumped, bumped bruised, like, you're bumped, bruised, and blessed. What does bumped yeah. mean? By the way, I so see you. It's like you're, wait, you're bumped I got, I, gotta track. Say, I, got, I gotta say this, my friend. I see you, Spider Man, in the background. She's so in Spider, the background. I see you. Birthday girl. <laughs> I, I, I just I just had to say that, Spider Girl. Nine years okay. old, birthday girl. Okay, go ahead. So, what does bumped mean to you when dealing it's with It's kind of like they bump you off track, right? Like, this is the irony of it all is narcissists are attracted to people with admirable qualities. Narcissists are attracted to people that are ironically everything they are not, everything they aspire to be. So you're strong, you're confident, you're successful, you're genuinely good-hearted. All these things they do not possess because they're such a frail, feeble, um, inadequate, you know, shell of a person that they do not have the these endearing characteristics or qualities. So they want to take you and they want to bump you off course. They want to take you from your trajectory mm -hmm. and get you off the path of success. Well, you lived your life dealing with a narcissistic person, a selfish, self-absorbed person who was out for themselves more than they were to take care of your heart and who you were and be your partner. You lived and dealt with someone like that. What is your advice? What is your advice when you see the words emotional abuse? Someone's going through that right now. They will come across yeah. this conversation that we're having. What's your advice to that person? This hurts my heart because I experienced narcissistic abuse from the romantic entanglement, we'll say, as well as the, you know, upbringing, my parental mm. dysfunctional toxic yeah. duo. So my mom was the narcissist, mom, in quotes. She was the primary narcissist. And emotional abuse, like, like I said, I'm a mother, so this really hurts my heart. It's just as simple as not supporting your child, just not validating them, seeing them, respecting them, validating their emo like even acknowledging a child's emotions. And children are going through it. They're working things out on their own. They're getting to know themselves, the way they respond to things. And narcissistic parents want to suppress that they want to suppress your individuality so children are to be seen and not heard that's like their whole mantra you know they don't respect children and that infuriates me because we have beautiful children and we're honored to be their parents and it's such a blessing to see them growing and developing into their own individual little people and narcissistic parents don't want anything to do with that and the same with the romantic entanglement emotional abuse is like i just did a reel on this quickly it's about like they use a lot of intermittent uh reinforcement reward it's like they know that you're they love bomb the heck out of you initially to you know rope you into thinking oh my goodness we're madly in love this yeah. is my soulmate and then they deliberately withhold that love, that attention, that affection from you. That is emotional abuse. One of the things I learned after I was dumped by that creep is that the silent treatment is very much a form of emotional abuse, which 
again, it's all these covert tactics mm-hmm. that these um, cowards basically implement to hurt you. And it's not something that, you know, it's not like a slap in the face that's very black and white, cut and dry. It's mm-hmm. it's things that fly under the radar because narcissists are cowards. And what? that's very much a form of emotional abuse is not acknowledging or validating your feelings. Or mm-hmm. the silent treatment is like, you're a human being, right? Like you and mm-hmm. I have a dialogue and mm-hmm. if there's a problem to address, we'll talk about it together. Yeah. But yeah. narcissists, they just totally X you out of the equation. Like you don't even matter. You don't even register as a human being. I'm not going to give you a space to express yourself. It, it, you, um, it, it was just said just a moment ago, you said it, it you you mentioned something that I have to ask you about. So you're dealing with emotional abuse when you were in this previous uh, relationship, uh, as we call it, Um, this abusive relationship, you were with this person who was giving you the silent treatment. Now at the time you weren't uh, as knowledgeable as you are right now when it comes to narcissistic abuse, you were dealing, you were dealing with this relationship. Somebody else is dealing with that. Maybe even right now, how did it make you feel when you were receiving this emotional abuse? Or in other words, when you were receiving the silent treatment, how would you describe it so that someone else who's going through this and is just now finding our channel, your channel on YouTube? Uh, by the way, what's your channel again on YouTube? Bumped, bruised, and blessed. I had, I had to get that in real quick there. <laughs> so so um, when it comes to this emotional abuse, silent treatment that you received, Describe it emotionally, what it was like for you. It's the epitome of gaslighting. You think you're going crazy. You feel like you're losing your mind because you have all these feelings and you are led to believe that you're in a reciprocal relationship when in fact it's very much one-sided. So you're stuck with all these feelings and you have nothing to do with them, but deal with them yourself. And BTW, there's no shame in the game of not identifying this as abuse because I cannot stress it enough. Narcissists are cowards and they will do all of these insidious, passive aggressive things to hurt you. Mm -hmm. When I was with the creep loser X, um, I was obtaining my master's degree in psychology. Mm -hmm had no idea I was being narcissistically abused. It's None. very different. No idea, no idea at all. Even even though you're studying, it's Had no idea color. that that None. was my upbringing, had no idea that's what I was experiencing. Wow. Entanglement, relation, had no idea. But you know what? Mm-hmm. Book knowledge is very different from real life experience. Yeah. Now the real life experience you had with this emotional abuse, um, caused you to have your eyes open. Uh, Did your eyes open towards your mother first or toward this relationship and the abuse? My mother. It's uh, funny that you said that because I just read a really awesome post on Instagram. Somebody wrote, um, I had no idea as I was learning about my toxic relationship with my ex that I would find a name for the abuse I experienced from my mother. It was kind of like the reverse of that, because again, I can't say it enough. Thank God that I am like almost 20 years removed from that nightmare. Mm -hmm. Um, I was again in my young twenties when I was with that creep, but um, it was one day I was, because I'm disabled and I was not in front of the TV, I was on my phone on YouTube mm. and a video appeared about narcissistic abuse. And I was like, mm. let me give this a whirl. <laughs> so I did. Uh, and wouldn't you know, I was like, stop it. This is like on the nose, yeah. everything about my mother. And I told my husband and Ever since then, I just immersed myself in everything I could learn about it. 
and apply it to my upbringing. You know, I am the black sheep. And then I was able to translate it to what I experienced when I was with that nightmare. It was such a volatile relationship, if you could even call it that. But it was five years on and off with that guy. Uh, okay, so now I'm going to put this up and you tell me what you think. We are going to touch on financial abuse, but uh, we, we've t- talked about it a little bit, but now I'm going to ask this question. Is financial abuse the same as, now remember now, I'm not the professional, I'm just the guy with a microphone. So is financial abuse similar to emotional abuse in your opinion? It's, it goes in hand in hand with it because okay. the financial abuse will lead you to, again, believe that you are the crazy one. It's a lot of gaslighting. Um, narcissists will cut you down and their, their whole goal is to make you believe that you can't live without them. Wow. You know, as frail and weak as they are. They want, they need to find a sense of self importance. So, by them manipulating you and getting you to believe that you can't live without them, that's like a feather in their cap. That's how they, they get their, um, they get their kicks. You know, they, they have no formidable relationships, they have no genuine, authentic, feelings or connections with anyone so by them manipulating people that's how they live for that that is their supply that is their primary point of existing that's what makes them feel alive that's what makes them matter so when they financially abuse people that's like particularly in romantic relationships like Mm -hmm. I'm witnessing this right now with my girlfriend and it's so hard. Like it really, again, it just hurts my heart because I see her and she's such a beautiful and kind Mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. And she has been totally raked over the coals by her ex narc and they have a child together. So of course there's always going to be that connection, but you know, he, he was the cheater. She stayed home. She was raising their child. And she was investing in their relationship. She was investing in their family. All the while, he was working. You know, he was a breadwinner. So he was forwarding his career. Now that he cheated on her and they are no longer together, she is left trying to scrape together funds to support herself and her child it's difficult and you know of course as a victim of narcissistic abuse we tend to put the blame on ourselves because that's what we have been trained to do Mm -hmm. so she's trying to you know get herself financially in order like and i i'm thank goodness she has me to remind her you did not do this. He is the creep. He intentionally debilitated you financially so that you're nothing without him. And the irony of narcissists is that they get angry at the victim after they screw you over, after they do you wrong, cheat on you and everything else. They justify their malice in their delusional minds, their twisted thinking by getting angry with you, like somehow you failed them. Yeah. yeah. So that's what's happening. And, you know, I was really, it was nice to see actually people commenting. When I put that video up on YouTube, mm-hmm. a lot of, I was speaking about my financial abuse as a child of a narcissist. Right, when I was right, in right. college and I was obtaining my, degree everyone around me was completing their internships living off campus living great lives you know no worries whatsoever i was so stressed out at one point i was working three jobs i was supporting myself i was buying my books 
you know, at the time, my student loans did not kick in until after I completed my education. So that was not a factor. Mm -hmm. But um, I was struggling so bad because narcissistic parents set you up to fail. They don't want you to stand on your own two feet. But thank God I was resilient and I just kept coming back. But a lot of people weighed in on that and said they had the same experience that they struggled so much when they were young adults because your narc parents like resent you for being independent and autonomous and they don't want you to do that. That's what you that's what you experience. Um, you experience not being independent. Feedback there. I don't know why. Um, but uh, right now. In your life, your life you're, independent. you're independent. That feedback is freaking me out. Me out. <laughs> I don't hear it. Uh, then it's truly in my head. Oh, by the way, by the way, by the way, I just want you to know that I appreciate my cup you sent me. I had to throw that in. I love that. I had to stick that in there too. Um, I I need to I need to move on to this because I know you have something over there you want to share with everybody. And here we go. Controlling people. Uh, you experience financial abuse through your family. Others receive it in relationships. Um, I want to thank everybody, by the way, for, for stopping by. But uh, we're going to touch on a book before we end up uh, closing out the show today. It's entitled, right, Controlling People by uh, Patricia, Patricia Evans. Evans. It's Patricia from Evans. way back in the Barnes & Noble days during my breakup of like 2005. I went to the Barnes and Noble self-help relationship section. Nothing about narcissistic abuse, but this book perfectly described that creep. Okay, give me an example of how it did that. I have a creep because <laughs> I have a lot of it highlighted. Okay. I'll tell you. All right, here's something she wrote. Feelings seem dangerous to controllers who have been trained to believe that emotions are wrong, not real, not to be acknowledged, trusted, or even contemplated, and to believe that if they show their pain or even their pleasure, they will be wounded further. Because the whole narcissistic persona is a defense mechanism. It's a very intricate defense mechanism constructed by these disordered people because they fail to address their unresolved issues. That's where we get roped into it because I put a post up about this. It's like the good person affliction. You know, it's like as good people, we want to help these people. We want to help everyone. You know, we are the biggest cheerleaders of the underdogs and we see these people, I, I was saying to my girlfriend, it's like 99% of these people are bad. Maybe there's 1% of them that is good. And we're like, oh, 1%, I could work with that. That's great. 1% is <laughs> good for me. You know, as good people, we want to help these people. So they're so frail and they feel so inadequate and insecure that they've erected this fortified persona of being the biggest, this grandiosity, the biggest, the baddest, and the best. But where I have a problem is that they maliciously hurt other people or bring other people down in the process, and that's not okay. The, the book that you have there from Patricia Evans, it helped you. It helped you to get where you are today to open your eyes. What else is there in that book that you could share with someone to open their eyes today? Just, you know, the main takeaway is that narcissists are control freaks. And you think about it, and it's because, I mean, everything in their life is a lie. It's all phony, you know. They told one person this, they told somebody else something else. So they have to keep all their ducks in a row. They got to keep everything separate they can't cross lines so when you think about it they have to control everything because they don't want to be found out they don't want their lies to be exposed 
or their true self to be exposed. So they lie to everyone. So therefore they must be control freaks. And in that way, they also have to control you, their victim. And if the victim doesn't know that this is taking place, they continue, well, victim, if the, if the, if the prey, uh, the predator is working on the prey, the victim, they have no idea what to do because they're constantly chasing the approval of this person they believe is also in love with them. How, how did you navigate to break free? You've been free now for 20 years. How did you navigate to break free? What well, advice do you give? Thankfully, that creep dumped me. I was discarded. And again, I am bumped. I am bruised. I am blessed. That is why I am as passionate about this as I am, because I never would have left. I would have just, I would have just kept going through that, you know? Yeah, right, right now. You're helping a lot of people through your YouTube channel, uh, through Instagram. Do you also have a website as well? Yeah. Did I say that right? I mean, I do, but it's not up yet. It's a work in progress. But you got Amazon, right? Yeah. I'm, I got merch on Amazon. <laughs> I'm super happy about it because I'm a sucker for free shipping. And I do have <laughs> merch up on Spring. It was Teespring, okay. now Spring. Yeah. So I have mugs and the cups up on there, which is great. On Amazon, I have like a pair. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You have what again? You have you said cups? Is that what you said? <laughs> the dancer. Okay, go ahead. Like your new logo as well. I have to tell you. But spring, I have, I have two different. But Amazon was my latest accomplishment, and I'm super uh -huh. proud. Of it. So you you're saying people can get T-shirts? Is that what you're saying? Can. You can get t-shirts probably just free shipping <laughs> just, i am so shamelessly pl i love plugging the stuff for people that come on the show so please forgive me for being so lame at uh at doing that um uh, I, let's do this uh we have gone uh 20 some odd minutes or so uh i am going to need to uh show everybody something uh and uh here we go just uh hang in there for about 20 seconds and take a look at this We're back. <laughs> that was a moment for us to gather ourselves. Thanks, uh, thank you to everybody that's still hanging in here. This is, by all means, if you've never been by here before, some of you know us from uh, Instagram. This is a low budget show with high caliber guests. So you'll see a number of different people here, and uh, thank you to everyone who has stuck with us over the past two and a half years as we continue to grow. Uh, our whole purpose is to reach as many as possible with individuals. Uh, who will share tips, tools, and strategies with them. So I hope you're ready for this. We are going to uh, be coming near the end of our show, but uh, I need to ask Michelle this. You ready? Here we go. What does the word bruised mean to you? It means we're down, but we're not out. We are bruised. You know, we have been hurt by these people because we being in love and i say this about myself often you know i fall in love with people i really do like there's not there it's all or nothing for me my husband is the same way so in order to form a genuine connection with someone that requires a level of vulnerability it's opening yourself up to you know being hurt or whatever so we were profoundly hurt by these jerks. So we're bruised, but nothing we cannot overcome. You know, I never have to get you to try to open up. I, I just have to, I just put a word up and you just go. 
you know, sometimes I have to get people to open up uh, after, you know, I, we, I've done about 500. I'm, 500. Hit, 500. I'm, I'm ready to go. Yeah, just totally just keep going. I see you, Spider Girl, back there. All right. So uh, here we go. Next word. What does this word mean to you in your journey of dealing with narcissistic abuse? So much. As I was kind of touching on earlier, I was dumped. Thank God by that creep that I was with when I was in my young 20s. Um, and thanks to YouTube, I learned what this horrific treatment from my family of origin was. And so I am so blessed. I'm so blessed with my husband and our beautiful children. And I just feel like knowledge is power. I feel that the more you educate yourself, the more you know, the more you grow, the better able to protect yourself we are. Yeah. You um, you don't hold back in how you feel. Uh, you have a beautiful family. Your husband is truly an amazing man because you have trained him well. Thank you. <laughs> He's going to hear that. He's going to go like, what is Paxton talking Thank about? For that. Okay. Um, but... You know, you until you just said that probably say that what what <laughs> would you you yeah. you just said that so i don't know i can't promise yeah i don't know about that um look the book controlling people by patricia evans is something that you wanted the, the viewers to know to try to pick that book up yeah, yeah could you hold it up a little bit there you go right there hold it right there controlling people by patricia evans that's perfect um uh, i want to thank you for being here today um, and I want to make sure to give a shout out to Gino. I don't see him today. Uh, Gino, I don't see Gino at all. He's the dog, by the way. Okay. All right. Now it's not snowing there in Jersey like it was before, right? Last night. Oh, last night. Okay. All right. And there's your daughter <laughs> with their spider girl, uh, back there behind you again. Now I'm going to do this. Here we go. Before we go, I need you to do this. Can you give us some helpful tips for someone to keep in mind so they can continue to feel blessed or, as it were, have a, a beautiful life despite the fact that they're dealing with a person who's trying to rob them of their peace? Absolutely. Do whatever it takes to maintain your self-worth. If that is daily affirmations, I mean, look, I was trained to think that anything in preservation of my well-being was <laughs> frivolous, you know, with my toxic upbringing. So I felt silly doing affirmations, but you know what? You keep saying it, you keep saying it. You do believe it. It gets to your subconscious. So do affirmations, um, do self-care anything to um keep to prioritize your well-being so if it's checking out and playing a stupid video game or reading a book or just something always maintain your well-being and prioritize your self-care always maintain your boundary you know um in terms of financial abuse be just be cognizant of all of these things and you're good to go. You have a much better chance of a favorable outcome. I feel like there's nothing better than educating yourself and yeah. seeing these people for who they are, what they are and what they're doing because they want to control you. That's their yeah. end game you know what i have to read the back of this book which is obviously why i got it there's does this sound like someone you know do they always need to be right do they tell you that you are tell you who you are and what you need to think do they employ imply that you are wrong or inadequate when you don't agree are they threatened by people who are different do they feel attacked when questioned? Um, they don't seem to really hear or see you. I mean, that's wow. that wow. summarizes narcissists right there. So if you know that's what you're dealing with, just 
be aware of it. And, you know, when you actually see these monsters for what they are, it's almost humorous. You can almost sit back and just laugh because they are so predictable. And they all do the same things. That's why I love this type of material and putting this stuff out because it's applicable in all of our situations. Whether you're dealing with an arc parent or a narc romantic partner, they all do the same stuff and their end game is to control you. Yeah. You have you have been a, a breath of fresh air. Thank you so much for doing this. We are not done. Today we are. But there are two or three more shows I believe we're going to be doing together on different subjects. So thank you so much for doing this. Um, everybody, we're going to go for now. Uh, but I need everybody to please go to uh, Michelle's YouTube channel, which is what? Bruised and blessed. Like, share, subscribe. That's right. Like, share and subscribe and to go check out Amazon. Tell us a little bit about Amazon before we go. I'm so proud of it. It's something I've been working on and it's it's um, mostly apparel and there's like a pillow and there's a canvas bag. My husband tells me that in New Jersey in May, you will not be able to get plastic bags anymore. So oh. the canvas bag will come in handy, but it's available in Japan, Spain, the wow. UK, France, Germany. I love it. Like, and if you're, Go girl. you're, you're all Britain. over the, you're all over the world, huh? International. <laughs> and I like to say it's that so cool. truth are blessed. It's a badge of honor because yeah. we've been through a lot of stuff, yeah. but above yeah. everything else, we are who we are and we have good heart and yeah. we're blessed. Yeah. We're you're, blessed you're, be you're a beautiful, you're a beautiful person. You're a beautiful woman. Uh, we have uh, spent some time with uh, everyone today that will be able to see this back. Thank you for being here live for many of you and in, um, look forward to uh, other shows that are coming your way uh, with Michelle. Michelle, thank you so much. Uh, let's, let's do this. Let's put this up for everybody. Yeah, that's my merch right there. <laughs> that's my um amazon sweatshirt actually hopefully hopefully everybody didn't freak out we lost everybody there for a second there was something that just happened uh we are back together uh but uh what i wanted to say is uh everyone if you get a chance please make sure you go uh and check out michelle also on instagram um we thank you for doing today's show <laughs> a day in the life of michelle uh and uh talking about controlling people financial abuse and so much more. Thank you, Michelle, so much for today. I appreciate it. Everybody, Thanks. we Thanks. will see everybody again. We can wave at them on the way out there. I don't know where that technical glitch came from. I'm glad we're all still here together. Um, we'll see you guys soon. Thank you very much. See you later, Michelle. Thanks, Paxton.